Hello, uh, my name is Patrick Perez, and today I'm here uh, to refute what my opponent just said. Uh, first off, he made the claim that uh, it's uh, unconstitutional. Uh, we understand uh, what the current policy is, and uh, that's why we're making our case for policy reform. Uh, that's the issue. We're trying to reform, change things. Uh, you brought up the uh, Devin brought up the point of uh, continuous punishment. He claimed that. Uh, it's dehumanization to force uh, these uh, ex-felons, convicted felons, all like to remove their right to vote. That it uh, dehumanizes them. However, I would make the claim that what about rape victims? Uh, rape is a felony. They are severely dehumanized. When do they ever get their, uh, their justification? When do they feel human again? Families that suffer uh, a loss due to murder, another felony. How come they have to keep suffering? Why does the criminal himself get to have his life back? What about the, the people who have suffered? They did nothing wrong, and they have to live with that for the rest of their life. How is that fair? Uh, <clears throat> secondly, he brought up that most of these felonies are not as severe. However, uh, most minor felonies are dropped to misdemeanors and therefore don't even apply to this case. Uh, also, he brought up the idea of class three felonies, uh, which uh, which may not sound as bad, however, According to felonvotingprocon.org, uh, class 3 felony calls for a minimum of 10 years in prison, up to 25 years. I'd say that is a sufficient time to completely warp somebody's mentality on the world. If you spend 10 years in prison, I assure you will not have the same outlook on life as you did before going into prison. Uh, he also brought up the point that Alabama, people in Alabama shouldn't be able to influence people in California. However, as a nation, we all vote on the president. By voting on the president, you're influencing not only the nation, the world. So I would say people who vote in Alabama do influence people in California, uh, massively, actually. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure you all, you all remember uh, in 2002, uh, this has been said plenty of times, the, uh, the presidential election between uh, Gore and Bush, uh, and the statement that by allowing felons to vote in Florida alone, the outcome could have changed. That alone right there is a point to prove that we influence everything, you know? Any, any vote counts on a nationwide scale, not just to one state. Um, <clears throat> I would say that it doesn't make sense to let uh, criminals vote. They, they've shown that they themselves are incapable of, uh, proper, of uh, proper judgment. They, uh, they have poor judgment. Uh, Roger Clegg, JD President and General Counsel for the Center uh, for Equal Opportunity um, on the website felonvoting.procon.org, is quoted saying, We don't let children vote, for instance, or non citizens, or the mentally incompetent. Why? Because we don't trust them and their judgment. So the question is, do criminals belong in that category? And I think the answer is clearly yes. People who commit serious crimes have shown that they are not trustworthy. According to uh, WebsterDictionary.com, uh, uh, the the word I always have trouble saying this. I'm sorry. Uh, recidivism. Recidivism. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that word means uh, a tendency to relapse into a previous condition or mode of behavior, especially to relapse into criminal behavior. Uh, this is a key issue uh, with all criminal behavior. Um, 76.5% of criminals within five years of being released although I don't have to the website, uh, are uh, convicted once again of another crim uh, crime, either more serious or equal. Uh, more likely, not less. Less severe. Um, <clears throat> also, the idea of allowing criminals to have the right to vote promotes the wrong message. Uh, to me, that's just saying that, yeah, you can mess up, you can kill somebody, but in the end, it's going to be okay. You're going to have your life back. Uh, and what does that teach our children? Uh, according to Roger Todd and Lewis Jury on uh, www.independent.com, uh, uh, we're quoted saying, crime really does run in the family. According to findings uh, of a 35-year-long study, researchers at Cambridge University's Institute of Criminology found that if children had a convicted parent by the time they were 10, that was the best predictor of them becoming criminal and antisocial themselves. So, if we're allowing these criminals to uh, go back into the world and give them their lives completely back, it's teaching their children just to follow in their footsteps. 
if we want to end the pattern, if we want to stop this recidivism, that's how you say it, uh, from happening, then we have to address the key issue that we need more severe punishment. Uh, as uh, Aaron had said last week, oh, poor rapist, poor murder. <laughs> you know, they've done their, they've done crime. The people that uh, were done wrong by these criminals, they'll never, they'll never get their lives back. And you know, it, it, that that right there is unfair. Uh, also, as uh, Randy brought up, the issue of borders. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, uh, Four Corners USA is a point in uh, the United States where Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, and Colorado all meet. Um, what about the issue of what if a, a felony was committed there? A matter of feet could change how your life will go. You were two feet to your left, you can vote in prison. You're two feet vote front. You're never going to vote again. You're two feet to your right. You're going to vote after prison. You know, it, it's how does that make sense? Um, and uh, to end my argument, uh, according to Vanderbilt.edu Development Psychology uh, com, according to Bethel Mobes and Christy Weber, parenting decisions affect how children turn out physically, socially, and emotionally. So once again, if we want to end the crime, we have to address the punishment and end the pattern. Thank you.